praise his holy name. I thank God for this day which he has given us. It's a blessing to serve God as it is written. Praise God for those of you joining with us. Hallelujah. We just finished our French service about 17 minutes ago. French because we had communion as well. We're also don't look to my left because the organ decided not to be with us today. So we have a little bit of piano going on. Hallelujah. So we're going to get right into the word of God. I'm going to read Psalm 108. David said, oh God, my heart is fixed. I thank God today, praise God, that we can have not just an attachment, that we can have a place where it, we are, uh, as the Bible says, immutable, unmovable, where we have a place where we are not tossed to and fro. We're not like empty clouds with whatever winds of doctrine that will make us move in a direction which is contrary to the, uh, to the will of God. And I thank God as David, I know this is Old Testament and it gets better when we get into the New Testament. But David wrote, he says, oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. So we don't have the, uh, the, uh, the full orchestra today. But I thank God when you get into the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 13 where it says that the fruit of our lips, and I love the word continually, we need to insist that word is there, the nonstop, not just because it's Sunday, but amen, as we give, as we offer up unto God that sacrifice of praise. This is what God is looking for today. And not just from the house of God here in Montreal, but this can be from wherever you are listening. Hallelujah. So I welcome you all. In the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and if you're listening in your living rooms or in your garage or your basement or bed, wherever you, in bedrooms, wherever you may be, we can, we can, we can become a doer of what we're reading here. He says, "I will sing." This is what David wrote. He says, "I will sing and give praise, even with my glory." Praise God. I know the next verse. He begins to mention instruments. Praise God. And like I said, we have a piano that's never been my favorite instrument. But anyways, hallelujah. At home, amen, I thank God that we can have the, uh, our vessels, praise God. In fact, we're going to look at, amen, we're going to be reading scripture on how we can be honorable unto God today. And I thank God that we have the breath like the Bible says, if you continue a little further on in the Psalms, it says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you're breathing at home, we need to come together and step it up and to give God the praise and give God the glory. Hallelujah. For who he is today, praise God. So share this link in about one minute or so. I'm going to pray and like as many people as possible. No latecomers. Get them on board right now. Praise God. I know we may have started a couple of minutes late, but get them, praise God, in a position so we can talk to God, ask God for our daily bread, and just be thankful for what God has done. Hallelujah. I know those, of, those who have stayed, uh, who are here for our French service, we're thankful for the message that we did receive from God, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The anointing, which there was, praise God, and we'll get into... Um, the same passages of scriptures and recite some different verses perhaps, but it is the same Spirit of God. And the Bible says, amen, the Bible, one half of a verse says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I thank God that we can talk about the Spirit of the Lord that is in this place, but also the Spirit of the Lord that is in us. Know you not that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. So that liberty today, we will take, hallelujah, full advantage of that freedom which we do have. Praise God. There's no one that is trying to get us to that, that is, well, they may try to get us to stop, but they're not stopping us. There's no reasons whatsoever that we have to stop, to slow down, to keep quiet, to turn ourselves, turn this off. Praise God. We have every reason, praise God, to serve God. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I thank God today, praise God, we're going to thank him for his gift, praise God, for he gave. Hallelujah. This is communion as well. I trust you're ready. We're going to partake of communion at the end of the teaching, at the end of the preaching. And we're also going to read how Jesus Christ, as he, as he ate that, that last supper that we call it in Matthew chapter 26, that he gave, praise God, of the bread and he gave of the cup, praise God, to his disciples. Just prior to giving us 
his life. Can someone say thank you, Jesus, for his life, which we have received? Praise God. Not just the bread that the bakers made, but bread which cometh from, a, from above. Praise God. Amen. So I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Ten seconds to share this link. Just put it out there again. Praise God. So people can, can tune in or can log in just in time for us to pray. Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Praise God. I thank God today for a name which is holy, for a name which is sanctified. Praise his holy name. Praise God. Thy will be done today. This is what we're looking for. Praise God. Amen. That we can praise you with our lips. We can praise you with the fruit of our lips. Praise God. Continually. Hallelujah. That the spirit of God is in us. Your spirit is in us and working in us and working through us. Hallelujah. And I thank God today that we can recognize and realize, praise God, your hand upon each and every one of us. Praise God. Young teenagers, even preteens in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Adults. Hallelujah. Seniors. Millennials. Whatever term they put on it, praise God. Whosoever. Praise God. I thank God today for the whosoever. Amen. Let everything that hath breath. Praise God. That's everyone listening to me. I thank God for ears that are open to hear, for eyes that are open to see, for hearts that are, will be open to receive what you have for us today. This word is not for everyone, but whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life, Lord. And I thank God today, praise God, for those believing. Hallelujah. And those receiving, for as many as received him, he gave, he gave them power to become the sons of God. And I thank God today for this power. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. The gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Praise his holy name, Lord. I thank God for it today. Praise God for everyone listening. Amen. I thank God. Amen. For the few that's in front of me, that's around me, but all those listening, praise God, via this technology. I thank God for the blessing that we have to enter into homes. Amen. The blessing that I have, praise God, to speak forth the word of God. Hallelujah. Without hindrance, without blockage, especially not being ashamed of this gospel of Christ, Lord. I'm going to stand in the gap and make a difference upon the face of this earth today, praise God, because your word, because of this book which we have in our hands, praise God. Bless my brothers and sisters, everyone listening via this technology as I welcome them into your presence where there are two or three gathered together in my name. Jesus said, there shall I be in their midst. And I thank God that we are partakers of this promise today. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. Thank God, amen, that we are in your place, that we are in your presence today, Lord. And it's making a difference in all our lives. I thank God for the French uh, broadcast, which we just finished. And I thank God, amen, that as it goes into replay mode, that there'll be people listening and they will be getting saved, Lord. Thank God for souls which have come to Christ this week. In the name of Jesus, I give you the praise and the glory that the devil is losing ground. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Hallelujah. From, amen. From forever and forever, from generation to generation. But right now, this generation, this message which they need to hear, salvation for this generation, Lord. I thank God that today, in the upcoming few minutes, this is the message which shall be announced, praise God, as we put forth, hallelujah, the gospel, hallelujah, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. We do it with anointing. We do it with power, with signs and wonders following. And I thank God all the glory goes to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Hallelujah. And my brothers and sisters, pray together. Praise God. In one heart, one accord, one mind. In the name of Jesus Christ. All the saints of God, everyone says amen. Hallelujah and amen. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Take a few extra seconds at home. Your hands are up. Keep them up. Give God praise and give God glory. Let him know, praise God, that yeah, I'm breathing. I've got breath and I'm praising the Lord. Praise God. Amen. I, I can clap. I can dance. Hallelujah. I can shout unto him with the voice of triumph. Amen. I can make a joyful noise by clapping my hands. Amen. We can change this atmosphere. We can change, praise God, our thoughts and our minds right now as we sit at the feet of Jesus Christ to receive what is that one needful thing. Hallelujah today. Praise God. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise his holy name. Praise God. Amen. We sing that chorus. Amen. When I think of his goodness. Hallelujah. And we're going to 
we are going to be in an hour or so when the teaching is done we're going to we're going to bring out the table for communion and we're going to look at the ordinances which are of the, which are fleshy which are carnal but it's going to remind us amen in remembrance of what he is so when i think I praise god how can i forget what the lord has done for me praise god amen so i thank god today hallelujah that the scripture, as the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone. Praise God. In a few minutes, as I said, we're going to have a table with, with some bread on it. But that's not enough. Before we partake of the table, that will bring out, and you'll see the, the fruit of the vine, and you'll see the uh, ba baker's bread, if you would. Amen. First, we're going to partake of this table. Hallelujah. Of what God has on the... Uh, I don't want to be too carnal, but what God has on the menu for us today, what God is to serve us today, amen. Thou preparest the table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. But today, amen, I'm not before my enemies, but the table is spread. Come and dine, the master calleth. Praise God. And here we are, amen, partakers, hallelujah, of everything what God has for us. And I thank God for it, praise God. It's a good-looking table, and I am ready to receive, praise God. So... Get your Bibles, get your Bibles, praise God. Very quickly, we're going to get into the Word of God. Hallelujah. Share this link. Make sure everyone who should be listening is listening. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thanks for helping me preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Someone say his name, Jesus. Thank the Lord for saving me. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thanks so much for joining with me today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Quite the different day. Even within, technically on the French side, we were People could see us and couldn't hear us. So we had to shut everything down and start everything over again. Still don't know what was wrong, but that fixed that. And then our organ gave up. Something just went, Poof, and that was it. Praise God. So we'll have to pray for God to <clears throat> bring someone along. Amen. The technician, which I have used for years and years, one of the best there was. I can't drag him out of retirement. I've called him and begged him and... A couple of years ago, he, met, he says, okay, I'll come out just because it's you. But he said, I don't work anymore. I'm sick. I'm tired. And he just sat in a chair and he told me what to do. But at least he told me what to do. And I was able to do it. So now this is a new problem. I've never faced, faced that before. And I don't know if I'll get him out of retirement. We'll have to find somebody else. Praise God. Pray and believe that we can get this. Amen. Our instruments. Amen. God needs, praise God, what we have in our hands, what we possess to, be, to serve him and to give him the praise and the glory. So... I thank God when everything is all working together unto the glory of God. Amen. It's hallelujah. It's, it's, it's perfection, and this is what God needs. Praise God, and this is what God brings. We're going to read this as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You can mute the organ mics or that mic that's on the floor. Praise his holy name. Just give me a little bit more volume, just a shade bit up. My voice is tired. We had an extra long service in French. Praise God. The second time we finally got started. Hallelujah. But it was a good message. I know the Holy Ghost, the anointing was there. Praise God. And I thank God. I give him the praise. And I give God all the glory for that. Praise God. So welcome. Once again, we're going to get into the scriptures. If you're listening on Facebook or if you're listening on whatever platform that you're listening to, you do see a title, The Curse of Sin, Part 4. This is the fourth part that we're going to be um, going into. And again, today we have communion as well. Uh, subtitle, which I wrote today, Sin Hath No Honor. And uh, we're going to 
I know in French we ran out of time, in English as well, because of communion, we're probably going to be look at a second part of this next week to look at the examples that we have of those who, um, who uh, disobeyed God and they were looking for honor and it just wasn't there. Sin hath no honor. Amen. We've been looking at this for the past two, three weeks where sin is destructive, sin destroys, sin separates, sin cuts you off from God. Amen. We've read scriptures enough to know that there is sin. This is not a mistake. This is not a weakness. This is not, I mean, churches use different terms today because sin is offensive. That word, that three little word, S-I-N, it offends people. Calling them a sinner shouldn't call people a sinner. Well, the Bible does. The Bible says we have all, this is the way that we are born short of the glory of God. Amen. We, are, we, are all, we come into this world as sinners, but thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for his son, which makes the difference, praise God. And this is what we looked at last week. Amen. Looking at Jesus Christ, for those of you, if you missed the teaching, I encourage you to go back. It was good preaching, good teaching. Last week, this, you look for the title, The Curse of Sin, Part 3, and the subtitle was The Power of a Perfect Priest. And his name is Jesus. What makes him not only just a perfect priest? Remember, we looked at the angel, the messenger that came and was speaking to Mary, and at the end of, after, after divulging the plan of God, the divine destiny which God had for this woman in whom he found favor, she looked at the angel, the messenger, and says, well, you know what, let it be according to thy word. Hallelujah. So we, this began, amen, the, uh, not, not by a carnal commandment, Jesus Christ came into this world by the Spirit, by the Word of God which was spoken, by the Word of God which was pronounced. And the Spirit of God, amen, that Word became seed in this woman's belly. This is what makes the difference. This is why I can describe a perfect priesthood. I can describe a perfect king. I can describe a perfect sacrifice because it was not made by the ordinances, by carnal commandment, but it was made by the Spirit of God. Can someone say amen? Praise God. We have a sacrifice, and there's a capital S on that sacrifice, a sacrifice that was made by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God. His name is Jesus. Amen. When John the Baptist pointed and says, Behold the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We looked at this last week, but I'll, this is worth repeating, praise God, as we as we understand who Jesus, not only who he was when he walked the face of this earth, but who he is today after the order of Melchizedek. I know religion will teach us that Melchizedek, we don't know where he came from and we don't know where he went and perhaps it was Jesus. No, Jesus didn't walk the desert under a, under a different name. The Bible says in a similitude or in the likeness or after the order of Melchizedek, and when you understand through the scriptures of who Melchizedek was, not only was he king of his family or of his tribe or of the group of people that was around, he was also their priest. And under the Mosaic law or under the, the Old Testament, priests were priests and kings were kings. The priests weren't kings and the kings weren't priests and the kings couldn't do what the priests did. And the priests certainly didn't have commandments and didn't go to war like the kings did. There was a difference. But in Jesus Christ, I don't need two. I don't need three. I don't need someone else. I have everything, all I need in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why he's the perfect priest. He's not only just a king, an ordinary king. He is king of kings and lord of lords. Praise God. Not made of an earthly commandment. Not made of a carnal commandment. Are you with me? Praise God. Amen. Listen. Hallelujah to what, was, what, we, what we understood today or last week from the teaching of last week. Praise God. And I thank God for this. Amen. Not after a carnal commandment, not after the flesh, but let it be according to thy word. Hallelujah. For the word of God. In the beginning was the word. Amen. May as well go right back to the beginning. Get the word of God. Hallelujah. Some people say, where do I start? It doesn't start with a sinner's prayer. It starts with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Having received, the Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? So a preacher needs to preach. And what's the preacher going to preach? The word of God. Amen. Anointed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Preaching a word, praise God. Amen. Which will prick, praise God, the hearts which will, amen, convict, hallelujah, to the, point, to the place where we realize and recognize, yes, I do need Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I need not only to believe, but I need to confess. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what the world needs today. And we're going to look at what Jesus brought. Amen. The teachings that Jesus gave us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And this begins, I'm going to begin by reading two verses. I want to get into 2 Timothy. But before we go there, we're going to get into John chapter 16. Amen. We're looking at the curse of sin. Sin gives a foothold to the devil. And once the devil has just what he needs to get in and just to start and just to undermine and just to tear down your belief, it doesn't take much. Hey, who are you listening to today? Amen. I've mentioned several times, and I believe I touched on this last week, where I mentioned where Eve was listening to a voice that, that, that disputed, and, and it was a disputation, it was an argument, it was in conflict to what God had established. But she fell for it. Look out. When the devil comes and we begin to entertain whatever voice we hear. There's a voice you need to hear today, and that is Jesus Christ, my shepherd. Because Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Amen. When I see sheep or goats or whoever running around following a, different, following a strange voice, they can't be the sheep of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ speaks. His word is there. The words which I speak unto you. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass, but not my word. So Jesus is speaking to us. Not everybody is listening. Amen. And this is, when I read this, listen to what Jesus wrote in John chapter 16 and the 8th verse. I'll give you a few seconds to share this link and to find this two verses which I'm going to read. Blessed be his holy name. I'm not sure if everyone is signed up or listening, but share this link. Remind them. Hallelujah. Don't get into the habit of putting it off saying and I can understand there may be a circumstance but after a while saying we can catch up or we can deal with this on Sunday or the next day or the week later or something else no today hear the word of God amen be with the gods be with all of us amen the saints who have gathered together be in one accord with us today praise God and I thank everybody who's listening praise God last week I missed some names when I went home I said oh my cousin Thomas was listening and I didn't see his name in the comment section so hallelujah amen if I miss your name or say your name by faith I know you're there and I thank you so much thank you so much for listening hallelujah my sister Kina is going to help me post some verses and I'm going to begin by reading John 16 verse 8 and when he is come speaking of the son of man or speaking of Jesus Christ he will reprove the world of sin. Who is being reproved? The world of sin. Amen. He, when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So there's going to be three. We're looking at sin today, so I'm going to read verses 8 and verses 9. And he's going to reprove the world of sin. Amen. He's going to bring to light, and we're going to read the next verse is, is fairly clear, of righteousness and of judgment. So this week, read verses 10, verses 11, righteousness and of judgment. But today, I'm just going to read verse 8 and verse 9, so that we know that the, who is the unbeliever. Amen. Whenever there is unbelief, there is problem. Amen. Unbelief is of the devil. Unbelief is demonic. Unbelief, and look what happens in verse 9, of sin. The world is messed up. The world is cursed of sin or by sin or because of sin. Why? John 16, verse 9. Because they believe not in me. Who's speaking? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reading. This is not something that I'm making up. I'm reading this. If you're reading from a King James Bible, then you're reading word by word with me. This is what Jesus Christ came to speak. Verse 8, he says, when he has come, he will reprove the world. Three things, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, verse 9, because they believe not. Look out when there's unbelief. Amen. All Eve had to tell Lucifer was, no, 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 this is what God says, and I believe what God says, now get out, back off. 
Amen. Go back where you came from. Amen. Except he wasn't allowed to go back from where he came from. Amen. People think that we can do all kinds of things, and we're going to look at the next, my next um, subtitle once we get through this, um, uh, where we're at right now. My next, I'm, we want, I want to look at the origin of sin. So next week or the week after, I mean, just keep listening, coming back to our archives. If this is in repeat the, today, this is a live stream right now. I'm live streaming on, this is July 18th. Uh, 2021. So whenever you're listening to, amen, but watch out for that teaching because it's in my notes to get there. Amen. And some of, when we think about it, amen, it's, it's not surprising. It's actually scriptural. Where sin started, where sin, where, where sin began. And it was in disobedience. It was to defiance of God and God's plan and what God had laid out for his creation. Now, you and I, we weren't here. Adam wasn't there. Eve, there was no Garden of Eden. There was, but God did have some creation. There was created beings, such as Satan, such as Lucifer is. And there was the planets and whatever else that God had made up until, up until that point. But then there came a, a, um, a disobedience. A, there came an aspect which allowed itself to go against what God had instituted f since the beginning, from the, from the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. Go against the Word of God, you're going against God. I know some people don't like to hear this, but what you have in your hands, if you have a Bible in your hands, it is necessary to read. You begin reading... Amen. And I know a lot of people read and they put it off. They read. They don't understand. They read it. They want to read it in a different language. They want to read it in a different interpretation. They want to, I've heard people, they've come to tell me, say, I want all, I'm going to read it in the Greek. I'm going to read it in the Hebrew. I'm going to read it in the Aramaic. I'm going to read it in the Samaritan. I'm going to read it in my mother tongue. Amen. Try reading it in the Holy Ghost. Try reading it by the Spirit of the living God in you, and it's going to make a difference. You will come to an understanding. Even though you're searching the unsearchable riches of God, the mysteries, praise God, of, of the, of, of, the, of the Godhead. I thank God, but the Spirit of God is there with us, as Jesus said, the Holy Ghost, which shall lead you and guide you into all truth, speaking not of himself, but of he who has sent him. Hallelujah. And this is he who I lift up today, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Praise God. Amen. So we need to pay attention to what we are listening to, to what we hear. I mean, you tolerate, you put up with unbelief for a little bit too long, it's going to drag you down. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which would easily beset us. It's there. It's around us. The devil comes knocking at our doors, but I thank God that the greater one is in me, and I have power, praise God, amen, to resist the devil. Hallelujah. And I have the patience to see him flee. It is written. It is written. It is written. This is how Jesus dealt with the opposition that came at him when he was sent into the wilderness for 40 days and for 40 nights. After receiving, amen, the, the, the witness from heaven, after being um, uh, anointed, uh, no doubt, praise, after coming out of the water of baptisms, and uh, the, the waters, rather, of baptism, the waters of baptism, after coming out of the waters of baptism, let me say this right, the Spirit, praise God, descended upon him, and there was a voice that, not, that he himself heard, but also the, his disciples and also all those that were present, they heard a voice saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Confirmed by the word of God. Amen. Confirmed by the authority which God has amen, emanating from his throne where he was able to speak again the word of God. And there was ears that were, that were there to not only to, to hear what God had to say, to hear God's claim at that very moment. But there was also Somebody who refused to believe, who wanted to enter into a debate and into an argument. Amen. The end of chapter 3. You begin reading in Matthew chapter 4. And the devil shows up and saying, if thou be the son. Well, did not you hear what our father in heaven had to say? Do you not know what is written? Can you not read what thus saith the Lord? Amen. Every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. And yet someone will come along with a dispute. And sow the seeds of unbelief. 
began, amen, the, 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 uh, the leavening, if you would, of, of, the, of a lump of bread which, which should be pure, which should be holy unto God, honorable unto God. And this is what we're looking at today. Amen. This is how it starts. Amen. And then the next step, once you entertain it for a little bit too long, then you start not only thinking, you start talking like the devil. Amen. This is what happened to Eve. The devil came along and says, oh, no, this is what God means. Let me tell you, you know, you need to understand this. If you touch, you know, you're not supposed to touch, but if you touch and you'll see what's going to happen, you'll become wise. So Eve goes and she starts speaking devilese. She starts speaking the devil's language. And she goes and she, she starts repeating what Lucifer said to Adam. This is not good. This is not a good uh, chain of events, if you would. And we see this happening today. Somebody gets up, they misappropriate the word of God. They don't pronounce what thus saith the Lord or as it is written. And somebody goes home with, with an understanding or conception and then it gets repeated and gets repeated and, and it seems to move on down. We need to put a stop to what is contrary to the word of God. And I know people don't like to hear this and people don't like this to, um, to be told this. Amen. But look what was hap- look what happened. Amen. Eve was the first, amen, to be attacked by the devil, if you would. She went home and somehow Adam fell into the the into the uh, the, the the plans or the or in, into the 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 misconception that Eve had received from Eve. And Adam, there is nobody else. I mean, you talk, we're talking about the world, amen. Well, in Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3, the world is Adam and Eve. That's the world that the devil had to deal with, and he did a good job. Amen. Who were they listening to? Amen. God came along in the cool of the evening. God comes down for some fellowship with his creation. This is the creator wanting to spend time with his creation. Hallelujah, this is the God that we serve. God comes down into the cool of the evening, and Adam comes up with a lame excuse, and God looks at Adam and says, who told you that? In other words, who have you been listening to? Who sold those, amen, those seeds of doubt, those seeds of division, those, that disobedience into your mind? Who are you listening to? We need to be careful today. What our ears, what our hearing is subject to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank God for a preacher. Amen. Thank God for, for, for be, be, as a, beginning with the word of God. It begins here. Hallelujah. This is what I'm going to endorse today, what's in my hands. The word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we got a whole book full. Praise God. Look at that. It's over three quarters of... Over 750,000 words in my King James Bible. Adam and Eve, they didn't have all that, but they had enough to keep them in line. I don't know how many years or centuries, however long that they were partaking of the benefits of partaking of the goodness of God until they began, they lent their ear to another voice. And this is what is in this world today. Amen. This world is filled with unbelief. They don't want to believe the word of God. They don't want to believe, thus saith the Lord. They're told not to believe. They're even taught how not to believe. This is, this is horrible when you think of it. Amen. I know what, amen, I can hear what's coming out of my mouth. People are taught, literally taught. They'll read it and say, well, you know, this is, if you have an understanding, if you go back and, and, and you, if, we, if we understand it with the, the context of how the Chronicles was written or the context of within the Psalms were written, we have an, amen, that Jesus Christ, we looked at the law of sin and death last week and we looked at another law, the law of the spirit of life through Christ Jesus our Lord, which has made us free from all this. Amen. So I'm not here to preach a gospel that will have us backslide, going backwards, going back into an Old Testament. Because today, and especially having communion, we are going to celebrate. Hallelujah. We are going to give God praise and glory and honor. We are going to lift him up for a New Testament. Praise God through the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was shed for you and I as a redemption. That Jesus Christ be our Redeemer. Hallelujah. You have to be praising God. Amen. I can't hear you at home, but give God some praise and give God some glory. Amen. For those of us who believe what thus saith the Lord. Amen. 
Praise God for a preacher, someone who will stand up and teach you how to believe and not teach you how to become an unbeliever. Amen. He's going to be messed up. He's going to get you into trouble. This is what Jesus said, John chapter 16, verse 8. He says, he will reprove the world of sin. The world is messed up with sin. The world is cursed. The title is the curse of sin. And we looked at how Jesus came. Amen. He cursed the serpent. He said, you're there. You just lost your legs. You're going to crawl the rest of your life. Amen. From Lucifer, from whatever you were before, four-legged or six-legged. I don't know. Maybe he had eight legs. Who knows? Amen. But God says, from now on, you're going to crawl in the dust. The woman's going to hate you. You're going to become an enmity with the woman. The womb was cursed. The earth was cursed. The, the ground was cursed. Adam was cursed. Amen. Sin. One sin. That's all it was. They didn't mess up and come back and mess up and come back and mess up and come back. There was no yo-yo scenario. Amen. They disobeyed God, and God says, we got to get them out. They lost their place, and they lost their position that God, that they had received from God. The promise that God had given them. God says, we've got to move them out unless they touch that tree. And they'll keep them sinners everlastingly, forever. God said, that's not going to happen. We can't have that. Amen. And they were moved out because they listened, and they ended up unbelief. Yeah, okay, I remember God telling us that, but maybe just, well, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, hey, Adam, hey, you that. Eve came home with a false doctrine. Praise God. Thank God for true doctrine that we have today. Not to be unbelievers. Hallelujah. Not the carnal commandment of sin and death. I want to read something, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Still laying foundation to passage of scripture I want to get to in a few minutes. Help me preach simply by sharing this link. Hallelujah. However, you're listening. Praise God. Paul wrote to Timothy. Chapter 3, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 12. And he says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus. I'm going to go back and we're going to read this from the beginning. So he says, Yes, this is, he's confirming. He says, Yeah, truly, this is, Jesus would say, Verily, verily, Paul here says, Yea, yea, this is true. Yes, someone say yes. Hallelujah, someone else say yes. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus. What is your will today? We're going to look at two wills. I'm going to begin by your will. All that will. Amen. In French, it's really clear when I read it about an hour and a half ago in French. It said, all days with the will. That's how it literally translated in French. Those that have the will. Amen. But here in, French, here in English, rather, my King James, it says, yea, and all that will. Amen. See, when people don't want to live godly, they don't, don't want to live unto God, they don't want to follow the scriptures, all of a sudden it's because they don't want to. It's not because you can't. Amen. It's because they don't want to. We're going to look at scriptures as we continue. If you stick with me for the next few minutes, I'm going to read scriptures over and over again that shows us that not only is it required, but it is, it is possible for us to do what God wants you and I to do. And it begins right here. Listen. And this is a good verse, I think, because we've been we looked at, um, are, you, are you worthy? Are you worthy to suffer? We looked at the disciples. This is about a month ago, six weeks ago. At the disciples who were in, put themselves in a position doing the will of God, and they suffered because of the cause of Christ. They suffered because of his preaching. They suffered because of his message. So when, I, so when I continue, when we read this, what is the, uh, the second half of this verse in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12? It says, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So you begin with this will. You begin with this, uh, um, your, your desire. I'll use this word saying, okay, God, here's your word. Amen. And you, sh you show me, first of all, you show me somebody who reads and just reads, and there's not much happening in their life. But you show me somebody who begins to put together, who begins to do what thus saith the Lord, and that you begin to see somebody who not only will be blessed, not only who is accomplishing the will of God, but someone who has a life 
after the promise of God and somebody who means business with what they're doing. Praise God. Because of their works, because of their fruit which they bear. Amen. Now, I know and I can understand some people sit there and say, well, we're not saved by works. You know, they come up with Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. They come up with that verse quite quickly, and it's very well known. So if needs be, I'll read, for by grace are you saved through faith. I'm reading in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift. Someone say, thank God for the gift. It is the gift of God. Now, verse 9, which is very familiar. These two works are familiar. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And then it seems to stop there. That seems to be where most people, they know verses 8, they know verses 9, or they know verses 8 and 9. But I'm going to read verse 10 in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Are you reading with me? At home, are you reading with me? For we are his workmanship. Amen. Why is it that you can be a vessel and a, a doer of good works? Because you are his workmanship. Hallelujah. It means you, are, you have become uh, not, not only created, not only his workmanship, you have become what, what God has been able to form, what God has been able to put into your lives or to impart into your life. As far as your vessel is concerned, God has worked, God has God is working with you. We are found not only in his hands, we are found between his hands, being shaped, being molded. Hallelujah. Being purified, being sanctified. And this is what makes a difference. When you understand verse 10, for we are his workmanship. Amen. God is doing a work with you and I. Now, does God do a good work? Someone say amen. Amen. God, amen. This is, this is God's hands. Hallelujah. If you have that will, if you have that desire, amen. Some people don't want to be shaped. Some people don't want to be molded. Some people don't want to, they don't want the hand of God in their life or upon their life, amen. And this is what makes a difference today because we are his workmanship. I'm reading Ephesians 2 verse 10. Created in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, if any woman be in Christ, they are a new creature, amen. There's Something new is going to come out of it. Old things are passed away. New things. Amen. You read the next verse. New things, the, the things of God. Hallelujah. So you're not just a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. I'm talking about godly things. Someone say godly things. Thank God. Amen. Someone, my sister or someone helped my sister post that scripture. Up from the Corinthians, praise God. Hallelujah. Back to Ephesians chapter 2, the 10th verse. The second half, he says, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Ephesians chapter 2 and the 10th verse. Hallelujah. So I know we're not made by works. Or rather, I know we're not saved by works, but we are made unto good works. Not saved by it. Amen. Not your works, not my works. Amen. I'll tell you whose works saved me, the works of Jesus Christ, the work which was wrought on Calvary, on the, on the way to the cross, while on the cross, when they took him off the cross and laid him in the grave, Jesus was at work for you and I. And what he accomplished according to the will of his Father in heaven, it, this is what has brought us salvation, and the Bible calls it a great salvation which belongs to you and I today, and I thank God that we can be giving him the praise and the glory, hallelujah, for what God has done through his Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Created in Christ Jesus. Last week we looked at a perfect high priest. Uh, amen. A perfect sacrifice, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is what is giving us, hallelujah, what we are receiving today from God is because of what he has given us. His gift, hallelujah, through his son Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. So I thank God today, praise God, that those all those that will live godly, is this your desire? What's your will? What is your desire today? Praise God. To live godly in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I mentioned that we're going to look at two wills. We looked at the first will. Now we're going to look at the second will. Hallelujah. This time we're going to look at God's will. 
But you know what's a blessing before I read the scripture? When your will and when God's will line up. Which means when your will, when my will and God's will is the same. Remember how Jesus prayed, not my will, but thy will be done. Someone say thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. 1 Thessalonians 4, I begin reading from the third verse. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3, for this is the will of God. So we looked at my will, we looked at your will, anybody who wills, you have the desire to live this life, God's going to give you everything you need. You have the desire to endure unto the end, the promise which God has unto those who endure unto the end for the same shall be saved. God will equip, we, equip you with everything that you need. Amen. Now let's find out what the will of God is. For this is the will of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God. I'm hesitant. I know the verse is probably already posted, but I don't know if I should keep reading. Some people just don't believe in this next portion. Amen. But you know what? I can't take anything out. I can't add anything to this prophecy. I can't take anything away from this prophecy. So let's keep reading. Can I keep reading? For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. What is the will of God? Amen. Even your, you can personalize it a little bit if you want, my sanctification. Amen. What is the will of God? Your sanctification. Listening at home. Everyone sitting in front of me, what is God's will? Your sanctification. Amen. Which means you got to be found... Within God's hands, you don't get sanctified by the hands of a man. You don't get sanctified by your own self. Amen. You don't get, you don't, you, you're not prepared meat for the master's use just by showing up. We, have, we need to allow God, hallelujah, to put his, it begins with a new heart. That old stony heart comes out. It's replaced with a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. This is the will of God. Verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Amen. And you can keep reading. Praise God. We can read verse 4 if you would. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. This is what we're looking at today. Sin hath no honor. Sanctified is honorable. Sin, not so much. Amen. We'll look at some examples if time permits. I know we've got communion and I want to have that fellowship with each other if you're prepared. If not, maybe you have some time. Find some grape juice, orange juice or milk. It won't work, so make sure you have some grape juice. It's non-alcoholic, fruit of the vine, bread. If you have a cracker, bread, whatever, and be prepared. Hallelujah to, to um, as, as the Bible teaches us to come together with the communion that we're going to have in a few minutes. But before we, amen, before we, as we begin to examine ourselves, this is an important aspect, and I'll read this from chapter 11 in 1 Corinthians in a few minutes. But right now, we, as we begin to recognize and realize who we are in Christ, can someone say in Christ? Hallelujah. What we just read. Amen. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus. Is that your desire today? Is that your will? Amen. Praise God. I know some people, or so many people, they walk around and they say, well, it can't be done. Well, it's because you just don't want to. Amen. You just want to keep on doing whatever the flesh wants to do. Praise God. Today I'm here to feed my spirit. I'm here to feed my soul. Praise God. So that when the flesh and the spirit begin to fight, the spirit will have more strength. It'll have more food to go on. Amen. Because the Bible says that the flesh and the spirit, they're always at each other. Amen. It's a continual combat. It's a continual conflict. Hallelujah. And who you feed will have more power. You want to feed the flesh? Go ahead. Keep on drinking. Keep on, you know, immoderately. Keep on lying. Keep on doing whatever the flesh wants. And the more you give the flesh, the more the flesh is going to want. Amen. Then when the spirit comes, spirit won't stand a chance. 
Hallelujah. But today, for the good of my soul, I thank God these words, which are spirit and they are life. Amen. I begin that the spirit of God is working in you and I today. Praise God. Amen. We're being sanctified by what we're being here. Of what we're here. We're being purged by what we hear today. Praise God. Doesn't matter how old you are. Amen. If you're a pre-teenager or a teenager, if you got white hair starting to, you know, at my age. Praise God. Amen. I was shocked this week when my government sent me my application for my old age pension. I'm going, what? Oh, yeah, I am 59 and a half. Anyways, I wrote on the envelope, old age pension application, put it back in the envelope and put it in the drawer. Hallelujah, I'm not ready to retire yet or take early retirement or whatever they were offering me. Praise God. Amen. I have the goodness of God. Hallelujah. And the blessing of God. Amen. The life which he has given us, given me through Christ Jesus. Praise God. So going back, it doesn't matter how old you are. Amen. Don't sit there at 13 saying, well, I'm too young. Amen. And don't sit there at 60 saying, well, I'm too old. Amen. Or 70 or whatever you're at or anything in between. If you're a millennial or a college student or university student, this is, when you read this, what is the will of God, even your sanctification? Hallelujah. This is God's will that every one of you should know how to possess. Amen. Amen. Today I'm, I'm being taught to believe. I'm coming to an understanding, amen, as I grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm not being taught, amen, to read this and turn the book and say, well, you know, if you understood how they lived way back then, it's going to make it. No, it doesn't work that way. Amen. Somebody for the past couple of weeks on the French side has been trying to convince me that the book of Acts is not for us. Well, then why is it in my Bible if it's not for me? What do you keep reading it for? You read it and you read this and sit there and say, well, that was for Paul and that was for Peter and that's for the disciples, but boo-hoo, it's not for us today. Then take it out of your Bible. If you're going to read this and say, well, it doesn't apply to me today, then why bother reading it? Why bother even believing it? Amen? That sounds like a dead law. That sounds like dead, amen, works. That sounds like a devil to me. Amen. This is life. And life means, praise God, that it is living today. Not just living, amen, living off these pages, but living in me. Can someone say in me? Amen. Praise God. Bad enough when people take the Bible and shove the whole thing away, but it's worse when they read it and they don't believe it. Amen. May as well shut the covers and shut the books. Believe one page and turn the page and say, well, not this page and not that verse and not that scripture. Amen. God is God. Amen. If you're going to believe his word, if you're going to believe what has come out of his mouth, amen, God, every word counts. Uh, every word is spirit and every word is life. Praise God. And this is how I relegate this book. Amen. When I open up this book, when I open up these pages, this is not ink on paper. This is spirit and this is life. Praise God, which is filling my soul. Praise God with that eternal substance, which I need. And this belongs to you at home today. Praise God. This can be yours. Hallelujah. You receive it as it is written. Praise God. Every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor. Underline the word honor. Then find 2 Timothy and the second chapter. Praise God. Hallelujah. Share this link. Other people need to hear what we're hearing today. Blessed be his holy name. This is doing, amen, my soul's good today. Praise God, as I read the word of God, hallelujah, and I read every single word, hallelujah, and I digest it, praise God. As I said, God is going to serve from his table before we bring out the table of, of carnal ordinances, if you would. We'll see some grape juice and some bread and some crackers and some grapes on the table. But I thank God today as God serves you and I, hallelujah, from what I have in my hands today. Praise God, the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Someone say, give us this bread. Amen. John chapter 6. Praise God. And then don't, don't refuse it when he served it. Amen. Jesus had them all worked up. He had their appetite in full, amen, in full blossom, fully. They said, yeah, give us that bread. And Jesus says, I am. Amen. He says, I am. Here. Oh, no. That's not what we expected. We thought we'd get something from the baker down the street. But as soon as Jesus said, I am, they turned around and they went home. Amen. Thank God none of us are going home today. Praise God. Amen. We're here. We're at our place. And as God serves, 
I eat. Amen. As God serves, I drink. Hallelujah. As the mouth of God is open, I can hear what thus saith the Lord. I hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church, praise God. And here I am, praise God, in the church, in the place that God has established. And open up my ears to hear, praise God. Blessed be his holy name. I don't know if you have ears to hear what I'm saying today or what I'm reading today, but amen. I thank God for his word, praise God, that you should know how to possess the Reason why people don't possess their vessel in sanctification, they don't know how. They haven't been told how. They haven't been told. I mean, this is what we looked at the past couple of weeks, reading in the Corinthians and reading Galatians chapter 5. If you missed that, amen, listen to parts 1 and 2. Because we looked at how to possess your vessel. In fact, we spent more time looking at unclean vessels, unhonorable, dishonorable vessels, Amen. To give us an idea of what is honorable. The exact opposite. Amen. What's dishonorable to God will honor the devil, will honor darkness. Amen. And what the devil wants nothing to do with. Amen. Beginning with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God what I have, the devil doesn't want. Amen. If I've got something the devil wants, well, then I better analyze and reanalyze and get rid of what I've got. Amen. Praise God. This is how you can tell. Amen. Some people have questions, and I understand. I'm there to lead and to guide and, you know, give them my understanding of the Scriptures and such. But quite often, when I hear the question coming, say, am I allowed to go here? Am I allowed? Somebody call me this week and says, how am I supposed to dress at the beach? I say, you dress the way you want at the beach. I don't care. And he's like very quiet. I said, are you a son of God? Because I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know him. Don't know a person called and called a number, gave me his name. And he said, I don't care. You dress. I said, are you a son of God? I said, well, I'm a Christian. Well, then why are you asking me how to dress to go to the beach? You don't belong at the beach. Are you talking about a beach where there's a bunch of people or a beach where there's like nobody, just sand and a lake and there ain't nobody there. It's just you and your God. No, no, no. And he starts naming these beaches. I said, name all the beaches you want. I don't know what you're talking about. I says, you can go. I says, first of all, and then we all went into the teaching, but his mind was made up. He already had the answer that he wanted. I could not confirm his answer, so he says, yeah, okay, anyways, uh, and that was the end of the conversation. Amen. But not knowing who he was, you can go to the beach and you can do what you want. I said, that do He said, what if, this, what if he's a Christian? What if he's the son of God? Maybe, maybe, amen, need that understanding. And, or, sometimes, or sometimes, I'll someday say, can I do these things? And most often, amen, you already know the answer. Because the Spirit of God is convicting you. Amen. Now, the flesh does not like to hear that confirmation. Amen. But what happens is we don't get an answer. So we just go ask somebody else the same question. We go ask, we'll change a church. We'll change a teaching. We'll change a channel. And if we find somebody that kind of lines up with their spirit and connects in such a way. As I said, at the very beginning, we need to be careful with what we listen to. Amen. Know what's written in the Word of God. Amen. Come to an understanding. And I don't know, I'm 59, and there's still things that when I open up these pages, there's still things I see and hear and say, oh, wow. Amen. My wife is speaking this, we were speaking this week of a situation, and she quotes this scripture. I'm looking at her. And she goes, don't tell me you don't know that verse. Amen. My phone lit up five seconds later. She had, even though we were in the same room, she texted it to me so I could read it. Amen, the three verses that she was talking about. And I put the phone down, and I said, I did not know that was there. Amen. I had read it, amen, especially the Proverbs. I don't know how many times I've read the Proverbs. That one never jumped out. Amen, until, amen, thank God for a Proverbs 31 wife. Amen, thank God for a vessel that is saved and sanctified. Praise God. Amen. So we, we need to keep, we need to involve ourselves. As I said, more and more. Amen. It's unsearchable. I don't care how, how low, how deep down you go, you'll never get to the bottom. Amen. And it doesn't matter how high you climb up or how, you know, how high you reach, you'll never get to the top. Amen. If you go this way, you'll never get to the breadth. If you go this way, you'll never get to the length. Amen. That's how good God is. Praise God for you and I today. Hallelujah. So what are we supposed to do? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Praise his holy name. Praise God for the understanding of his word. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
And going back to that phone conversation, I said, you already knew the answer, right? I said, you just, answer, you just want to know if I would have the same answer as you have? I said, you already know the answer if you don't want to accept my answer. He says, yeah, I got my answer. And that was at the end of the conversation. I couldn't go into any kind of teaching or whatever. Praise God. Like I said, do what you want. If you want to do fleshly things, go ahead and do fleshly things. Walking after the Spirit, a carnal mind is enmity with God. It cannot please God, neither can it be. It, it is, it's just can't be done, the Bible says. Let's get spiritual. Let's get biblical. Paul wrote to Timothy. I'm going to read this one passage. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus. So, oh, I'm sorry, rather. It's, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 21. We already read 3, 12. Let me get the right scripture. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 21. If a man or a woman, amen, if a person therefore purge themselves from these, and you can back up if you want to read how Paul is laying these things out to Timothy. Um, this just confirms what we've been looking at. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be, he shall be, amen, he shall be, there's no, I'm teaching you how to believe, not how to disbelieve or unbelieve, amen, he shall be, praise God. I'm reading 2 Timothy chapter 2, 21. He shall be a vessel unto honor. Underline the word honor. And immortality, or rather, sorry, let me get this straight. You know what I need to do? Get the sweat out of my eyes. Give me 10 seconds. My eyes are burning from trying to rub it out, but praise God. We have a great, warm, humid day here in Montreal. Praise his holy name. So I thank God, amen, for the blessings that we have. In the high 20s, I guess. Starting to cool down in the evenings. Shortly after 6, I guess it is. Let me start over. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. Amen. We read... Didn't we just read that word a few minutes ago? Amen. What did we read a few minutes ago? The will of God, even your sanctification. So now we know that God wants you and I to be sanctified. Is it possible? How does that happen? If a man purge himself or a woman purge themselves from these... They shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. So we need some purging. Hallelujah. Amen. James says, show me your works, I'll see your faith. Amen. If you don't have any works to show me, I won't see anything. Amen. I mentioned a few minutes ago, you show me someone who reads and is a doer of the word, not just a hearer, not just a reader, but a doer of the word, I'm going to see somebody who's got some faith. And that faith is being put that work, put to work. Hallelujah. And they are glorifying God. Amen. On the face of this earth. Praise God. Amen. Are you with me? Let me finish this verse. 2 Timothy 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified. That's the will of God. Amen. Now we are found within God's will. Hallelujah. It is not the will of God that anyone shall perish. Amen. His long suffering and his patience. Amen. That's salvation for you and I today. It begins now. If somebody's listening and you're not saved, you're not sanctified, perhaps because somebody told you you can't, or you're believing that you can't, or you're believing that it is not possible because of whoever is telling you their song and dance. Amen. Believe what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Believe the scriptures. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe what, believe what we're reading today. I know a man or a woman will show up, or the devil himself, an angel of light. Amen. Sometimes there's different characteristics. And then people lend their ears, and then they have trouble receiving from God, or they have trouble believing what God wants us to believe. 
And we already looked at unbelief. That's going to mess you up. As soon as that doubt is there, that messes people up. Hallelujah. Today I want to teach you how to believe. Shall be. Someone say, shall be. If you purge yourself from these things, you shall be a vessel unto honor. Someone say, I am. Sin hath no honor. I don't know if we're going to have time to look at some specific details uh, or specific examples, I should say, in the scriptures. Hallelujah. I want to get to communion. I don't want to rush communion. I also want to read from the book of Romans very shortly. Purge yourself from these. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. You're not ready for good works? Because you don't have the message. You're not hearing the message that we hear today. Hey, Matt. So I don't know if it's possible. I don't think that's, we just read it. First of all, I'm just reading, the, not one, what is the will of God. Reading how you're going to become a doer of good works. If you're his workmanship, God's going to make, God makes something good. Can God do something good? The answer to that is yes. Hey, Matt. So when, as his workmanship, hey, Matt. a vessel which is made meat for the master's use, this is what makes all the difference, especially to the body of Christ. Prepared unto every good work. Not prepared because you're being told the opposite or the contrary. I thank God for his word today when I see it as it is written. Someone say, as it is written. This is what makes all the difference. Praise God. Because God said it. Someone say, God said it. Amen. I know the devil says things, but I'm not listening. Nope. Not listening. Amen. Knowing the voice of Jesus Christ, knowing the voice of God. Nope. Hallelujah. I'm listening. Amen. Someone say, God said it. Amen. Folks down here on this earth, they can say whatever they want to say. But God has already spoken too late. Amen. That's a message that Eve should have delivered. I heard from God. God already laid it on the line. You're too late. Buzz off. Get out. Amen. So the devil came. Amen. The devil came to Jesus with a plan. And Jesus looked at him and said, it's too late. It is written. Amen. I don't care what you got to say. I don't care what you're suggesting. It's already been written. It's already been set in, 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 the, in, the, in motion. Amen. God's plan is already moving forward by doers of his will. And there they are. Amen. The devil shows up with something that is contrary. Amen. That's who it is. doesn't matter what, you know, what form or what shape or what personality they come in. Amen. Jesus says, Peter, you sound like a devil. Get behind me. Amen. He addressed the problem. Amen. He said, Satan, get thee behind. Stop telling me what the devil wants me to do. Stop telling me the devil's plan. Devil, get behind. Satan, this is how he treated Peter. His disciple broke bread. Amen. Not just one of the twelve, but even of, the, of, the, of his inner circle. Amen. When Jesus would pick three, Peter was always amongst Peter, John, and James. Amen. But what came out, this was no revelation from God this time. Jesus addressed the problem, named it for what it was and who he was. Satan, 
get thee behind. Amen. We need to recognize who our adversary is, the devil, so that we can see him coming and we know what he sounds like. Anything that is contrary to the word of God, anything that goes against the what is written, will destroy my soul, will bring a curse upon me. Hallelujah. I thank God today for the blessing of his word. Are you with me? Turn to Romans chapter 2. Praise his holy name. I'm going to read a half a dozen verses in Romans chapter 2 as we get ready. For our communion service today, the curse of sin. Amen. Sin is a curse. Romans chapter 2. I'm going to begin reading from verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Somehow we're talking about works today. Deeds is something that you do. And there is going to be a recompense. Verse 7. To them who by patient continuance... French, it used the word perseverance. Another scripture will use the word endurance. To them who by patient continuance, means you don't stop. Whatever comes against you, you don't turn around. You don't change your mind. We read the way David wrote it, Psalm 108 in the first verse. I'm not moving. I'm fixed. I got my mind made up. Hallelujah. To them, listen, there's two categories. We're going to read about two different, two categories of people here. Verse 7, it says, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing. Amen. We just finished reading in Timothy, every good work, good works, read in Ephesians, well-doing, Romans 6, verse 7, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, what do you get? Eternal life. Amen. Read it again. Who will render? So in verse 7, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, and immortality, they will be rendered eternal life. That's verse 7. That's one category of people. They, them, who in well-doing. In other words, Paul is saying, you would do well. Amen. Part of doing well is seek for glory and honor and immortality, but verse 8, now comes a second category of people. And in in case you're wondering or in case you're going to ask me, say, well, how many categories of people are there? Two. So this is not going to be long and drawn out. There are only two categories. You're either saved and sanctified or you're lost on your way to hell. Two categories. You're in the light or you're in darkness. Two categories. You believe or you don't believe. Two categories. Amen. You either washed in the blood or you're just messed up, cursed because of sin. Two categories. Hallelujah. Make your choice. I'm going to pray in a few minutes. In case you need some prayer, I would like to pray that you make the right choice today. Go from that one category. Listen to what, what, they, what is rendered unto them. Romans chapter 2, verse 8. Unto them that are contentious. 
I've been preaching on that maybe for half of this teaching, half of the past hour, I've been talking about contentious unbelief. God, I can keep this up for another two hours. Deciding that we would side with something that is contrary to the word of God just because somebody said it sounds logical. We have an understanding in our mind because of some thought or some perception from this modern cultural Western hemisphere belief, the way religion has taken a turn for the worse. Because the Spirit of God, which is being spoken unto the churches, but it's being disregarded, unto them that are contentious, don't argue with the Word. Hey, Matt, don't put up a fight. And don't drag it around either. Like I've mentioned a few minutes ago, you entertain that or keep those thoughts in the mind. Keep that. If, that, if, you, if you don't know how to shut that person, get rid of the devil. That unbelief. Nah, 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 I, don't, I don't agree with this. Now, if I was doing it, well, you're not. I don't know how many times I mean, people come and say, now, this is the way I would do it. Well, first of all, show me one thing. Show me what you're doing. How many souls have you got saved in the past year or whatever? I mean, they always come up with ideas, and they seem to have ideas, and they don't seem to be doing anything unto the glory of God, unto the kingdom of God, for God's glory. Amen. Thank God we're serving. Your tithes come in. Your offerings come in. You're testifying. I go home. I read all your verses. I quote a verse. It triggers another verse. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. The verses I received during the week. By text and by whatever, however, you, most of us understand how that, how that works as we are edifying and exhorting one another. Amen. Then along comes somebody with a plan. It's contentious. It doesn't line up with the will of God. And it causes problems to the body of Christ. But listen, he says, unto them, this is what, you, this is what you're going to get. Contentious. Do not obey the truth. But they obey unrighteousness. I'm reading Romans 2, verse 8. If you're contentious and do not obey the truth, that's what the contention is all about. Where the truth is spoken, yet then it's disregarded. And rather than to obey the truth, they obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish. They get rendered a lot of stuff. Well, a lot, there's a lot of rendering going on right here. To them that are contentious and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness, indignation shall be rendered. You'll be subject to the wrath of God. Wrath shall be rendered. Is there more? Yeah, you get more. Tribulation and anguish shall be rendered upon every soul of man and woman that doeth evil. This is straightforward. Second category of people. You have one category that, which we have just read that doeth or doth evil, depending how you want to pronounce that word. And in verse 7, you have those who are well-doing. So you're either doing well or you're doing evil. Two categories of people. Amen. And you don't do well on Sundays and do evil Saturday night. doesn't work that way. Amen. We came across the word continual, continuance in verse 7, who by patient continuance... If you're a well-doer, or if you're doing well, you continue in well-doing. Someone say well-doing. Amen. You don't do well one day and do evil the next day and come back, and this is not yo-yo Christianity. Amen. Verse 7, Romans 2, verse 7. Who by patient continuance 
in well-doing. One category. Verse 9, the second category. Those who do evil. Hey, man. As I said, some of these words, that we don't hear them that often or as often as we should. Sin and evil. Hey, Matt. It doesn't matter who you are, from what, what side of the law you come from, to the Jew or to the Greek. We're on the Greek side. Most of us. I don't know if there's any legitimate Hebrews or fleshly, carnal Hebrews listening. Or... We're on the Gentile side. Verse 10, but glory, honor, underline the word honor. Speaking of honor today. Glory, honor, and peace to everyone that worketh good. Now we're back to the first category. Amen. Well doing, doing good, worketh good, or doers of evil. Again, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. No respect. Last week we looked at two laws. The Mosaic law, the law of sin and death. The Jews were under. We went into the Hebrews. Kind of straighten that up. Thank God for the law of the spirit of life through Christ Jesus our Lord has made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And Paul makes this clear here. Verse 11, there is no respect to persons, Jew or Gentile. This applies to you. Verse 12, listen, for as many as have sinned without law shall, per shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law, ye shall be judged by the law. I mentioned last week there's people running around lawless. This doesn't apply to me. This doesn't go back. I'm, I'm, and they'll have certain contextual whatever beliefs or understandings that they have. Well, Paul says, you're without the law. Sin is sin. You want to sin without the law? It's still sin. You want to sin within the law? It's still sin. Hey, Amen. We need to decide today. Jesus Christ came to make us free. This is how I'm going to pray in a few minutes. I thank God for this word that we have today that teaches us who we are in Christ today. Hey, Amen. The mind that some people have is not a mind that has been renewed. Hey, Amen. Or transformed if you go into the second verse and or the first two verses in Romans chapter 12. We're already in that book. We're chapter 2. If you just turn 10 or so pages to get to Romans chapter 12. For I beseech your brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service in verse 2. Be ye therefore not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, someone say transformed, by the renewing of your mind. When I read scriptures like this, this renews my mind. This takes away the mind of flesh, the carnal mind which I have received. And it doesn't matter where you receive it from. It doesn't matter who has been saying what they've been saying throughout the years. It's time we get it straight. It's time that we get it right. Hallelujah. Straight from the source. God, his word, through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank God for what we have read today. It's gonna, it, this, this is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. And God is looking. We've looked at this before. Amen. We've looked at the difference where God is, in fact, I've mentioned this over and over again the past couple of months, where God is a, a separating God. Amen. God wants us to be, to be separate. Amen. God wants us to be when we're created, as the Bible says, by his will and how he wants us to be, amen, there, there is a difference, amen. Today, it's hard to tell the difference between the church and the world. Church looks like the world, and the world looks like the church, and it's all being one, all mashed up, mushed up together. Where is the spirit of God today, brothers and sisters, saints of God? Amen. We cannot be found contentious. 
disputing. Hallelujah. What thus saith the Lord? This is what makes the difference in a man and in a woman today. And that difference puts you in Christ Jesus. Can someone say amen? Amen. Takes you out of this world of darkness, brings you over into holiness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you with me? Amen. Sanctification. Honor. Glory. Praise God. Amen. Seeking for immortality. Give us this bread. But then you have those who don't want to accept it. If you're willing to accept what you heard today, amen, this may have been a hard gospel or a hard lesson to have received, but I believe I read it, I confirmed it, I backed up from what thus saith the Lord. Praise God. In fact, it's going to get us ready for communion. Hallelujah. Praise God in the next few minutes. But before that, I want to pray. Praise God. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for the understanding that you and I can have, which, again, comes from God and will come from his word. That's, this is why it's important for every one of you listening today. And I thank God for your presence. I know I didn't go into your names or where you were from and such. Hallelujah. The list that's before me is complete. If there's any new listeners, I welcome you. All my brothers and sisters, amen, thank God for, amen, joining with us. I trust you're ready for communion. Praise God. We're going to get ready in a few minutes. But we need to make up our minds. And, and those of you listening to the live stream, I know not every one of you have Facebook, so it's Monday and you're listening to me off the YouTube channel or whatever other social media platform, however you Connect with us. I trust you had time. You can pause this and just, if you have to go to the store, get your grape juice and get your crackers or get your bread. Amen. Because we're going to have communion as I announced last week. Praise God. But listening to me today, this is what, may, it's, it's the way we accept what we hear. Amen. Going back to Eve again, what she heard. They came to God and they had a revelation which was not, they had never seen, they had never perceived themselves before as, as naked. And they tried to explain that to God. So, well, now we're naked. And God says, who told you that? Where did that thought come from? Where did that idea come from? Amen. Well, that pest is going to be there, blah, 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 blah. Just don't touch. Because the Bible says after, after Lucifer got rid of his, you know, enticing words and tickling the ears, amen, she looked and she touched and she saw that it was good. Oh, well, look at that. He's not so far off. But he was off enough to create division and disobedience within the plan of God. And sin entered the world. This is what you read in Genesis Because of one man's sin, and the Bible teaches us how the cursing showed up right alongside sin. Hey, Amen. Because that's how the, that's how that's what comes with sin. That's how the two go together, and it's against God. We need to make up our minds today, and young people listening. You're not too young. It's not too late. Amen. Right on time for us to open up and begin to read and to begin to reread again. Look at these verses. Amen. In Romans chapter 2, who will render to every person according to what? 
What is your will? What is your desire today? The first verse that I read, I mean, I quoted lots of scriptures, but the first verse in 2 Timothy 3.12, yea, all that will live. Hallelujah, the way God wants you to live. If you're willing to live that way, God's going to provide you. God's going to equip you with we equip you with everything that you need. Hallelujah. And it starts today. Amen. To be free from that law of sin and death. Amen. The Spirit, praise God, through Christ Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, and that Spirit is the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord, and that Spirit is the Lord, rather. And that Spirit is the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The truth ye shall know. Hallelujah. This is where freedom comes from, to be set free. Amen. And his name is, this is truth. Praise God. And I thank God for this blessing. Praise God. You can bring the table out. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I thank God today. I thank God today for his table that we read from, that we heard from today. Right here in my hands, table of God. We're going to bring out another table. I'll call it the table of remembrance. Hallelujah. At home, if you have to go to your refrigerator and get your jar, your glass of juice, go ahead and do that. Or if you need to get your bread and crackers, go and do that. We're going to bring out the table. Praise God. Take your time. No rush. Amen. Bring the table here. We're all going to. I thank God for what we have heard today. Praise God from this table. And before, we, before I turn, to, before I turn to, the, uh, to this table that's coming out, I'm going to pray for what we have received. That's good right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. And I'm, I'm going to pray. If you allow me to pray with you, praise God. If you allow me to give God the praise and the glory. Well, that will do together. Give God the praise and the glory for the blessing that we have and for the blessing that we have heard today. Amen. The curse of sin. Praise God. There's, the table may seem to be a little bare. We had a lot more in our French service. Amen. There's a few stragglers, and I thank God for the stragglers. Amen, that have stayed behind to help me and to encourage all of us together here. Praise God. Some of us um, understanding uh, English fairly well. Others, amen, half and half are pretty good. Amen. Others, not so much, but we're here. Praise God. Amen. So I have not that many people to serve, but what's important is the fellowship, the communion that you and I can have uh, together today. Praise God. But I thank God for this table that we have eaten from, praise God. If we showed up today hungry, we did eat of the flesh of Christ. Amen. And if you showed up today thirsty, we did drink of his blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The table which has been spread before us. Praise God. And we ought to give God the praise and the glory for that. Praise God. Amen. But give me 60 seconds. If you, amen, and before you partake, and we're going to look at some scriptures, those who have the right to touch and those who shouldn't, amen, we're going to look at that. It's important, amen, but you can get right with God. Hallelujah, amen. You don't come this, to this table without discerning the body of Christ, and you cannot discern the body of Christ without being saved, without having Christ in you. Praise God. So if you're in that place, I can pray. You can turn to God and say, God, I'm going to ask for forgiveness. I want you to forgive me. And God said he would. God is true and faithful to his word. You need to repent of your sins. And upon repentance means you don't go back. Praise God. You don't go back to the way things are today, the way things used to be. We don't go back to that. Amen. And if you're in this, within this curse, because sin brings a curse. We've been looking at that. You begin to realize that, amen, and, and you say, I no longer want, amen. I don't care if you've heard me preach 103 times, amen, and some of you are still there listening to me, amen, and still, I don't know what it is, what stronghold that needs to be broken, but today I'll pray, amen. You can, break, you can make that step today, order of the Lord, 
and saying, I'm going to join my wife, I'm going to join my husband, or I'm going to join the preacher, or I'm going to join the saints of God, amen, on my way to heaven. It's the best decision that you'll ever make in your life, and you need to make it today. You need to make it now, praise God, unto the glory of God. So in 30 seconds, I would like to pray with you and for you. Hallelujah. If you, as you come to repentance, as you come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as you receive him, when you read in the first chapter of the book of John, the, the writer John wrote, as many as received him, amen, to them. To who? To the receivers of Jesus Christ. As many as received him, to them, amen, the receivers of Jesus Christ, amen, to them he gave power to become the children of God, to become a son of God, and to become a daughter of God. This is what you need. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And I want to pray this into your life today. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank God for this message which we have heard. If this message has drawn someone to repentance, if this message has brought, hallelujah, someone to the understanding and the realization that they need Jesus Christ and they need him crucified and they need him in, the, in their life today, it's making a difference. And I thank God today, praise God, that souls are saved and coming to the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. I thank God, Lord, for that phone call I received three, four days ago from a young man, 13 years old, who had the joy to tell me, says, Lincoln, I woke up at five o'clock this morning and I asked God for the forgiveness of my sins. I got saved at 5 a.m. this morning. Praise God. Amen. I want to hear more testimonies just as just as I heard this week, knowing that the devil is losing ground and the kingdom of God is being furthered, the kingdom of God is being advanced, souls are being added to the kingdom of God. And right now, that repentant soul, ask God for mercy. God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. That's how it starts. Seven very powerful words that you can repeat based upon the parable that Jesus gave us of the publican who walked into the house of God and recognized himself as a sinner I can't serve God. I can't give an offering. I can't. God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Hallelujah. And the mercy of God will be there for you. The grace of God, hallelujah, will be there for you as it is. Amen. As it has been in my life, as it has been in the lives of my brothers and sisters, in the lives of those praying for you right now. There's husbands praying for you, wife. There's wives praying for you, husband. There's parents, holy parents, praying for you, children, teenagers, preteens. Praise God. Some children are praying for their parents. Children are praying for you, Dad. Praying for you, Mom. Hallelujah. And I thank God today as we come together, it makes the difference because we're praying and fasting for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. In-laws. Praise God. Mother-in-law praying, praying for their daughter-in-law, praying for their son-in-law. Hallelujah. Father-in-laws. Amen. Hallelujah. Praying. In Jesus' name. Pray for one and another. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, praise God. The difference is being made today because of the word of God, which is heard. Lord, I pray this word finds its way into good ground. I come against the strongholds, whatever it is, perversion, nicotine, unbelief, religion, whatever it is. I break down those strongholds right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever is listening, wherever they may be, Jesus Christ. The anointing now breaks the yoke. Hallelujah. And I pray the Spirit of God into the lives, into the hearts and the minds of everyone listening, every soul listening to me. Within the sound of my voice today, it makes a difference as the Holy Ghost does the work. Praise God. Be filled with the Spirit of the living God today. From this day forward, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, to do the works of the kingdom and glorify God in the name of Jesus. Souls, even coming to God, coming, amen, becoming a member of the body of Christ today. All the differences being made because of the blood which was shed on Calvary, because of your son, Jesus Christ, who you gave, hallelujah, because you loved us. While we were yet in sins and in trespasses, Hallelujah, you gave, you made a way out for us. A way out of sin, a way out of darkness, and I give all the praise and the glory to you today. My Father in heaven, my Father in heaven, praise God. Blessed be his holy name. Thank God for that repentant sinner today. If there be one, if there be two, no matter how many, Lord, in Jesus' name, they come to fall in love with your word, proceeding out of your mouth, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I give you the praise and the glory for this message which we have received today. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. I pray the anointing upon this table. As we look upon it and we come to remembrance, as we look at these ordinances which are of the flesh, carnal, but we will be reminded of what the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us as we discern his body and nothing else in the next few minutes. Praise God. Bless this bread. Bless this juice. In Jesus' name, the fruit of the vine. Hallelujah. And bless those as we partake according to your scriptures as it is written. Thank God again for this time, for this opportunity which we have to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in the name of our Savior, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And all the saints of God, everyone says, praise God. Amen. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I'm going to read a few scriptures from Matthew near the end of the book of Matthew. If you can manage, I'm not sure what your, how your table is spread before you, but if you can manage a Bible or if you just allow me to read. I'm going to be reading a few scriptures from Matthew 26. I'm also going to read a couple of verses in 1 Corinthians 11, but I want to spend some time today. The teachings of Jesus were taught to discern his body. Praise God, and we're going to see how what Jesus gave us. Can someone say gave? Praise God. On this table, you see the two um, aspects. This is how most of us, we have an understanding of, button up. We have an understanding of um, what communion is. It's the fruit of the vine, and it's, we have bread, and we have crackers. Amen. And before before um, juice becomes juice, this is, this is what, it, what it is like. But there's a third aspect what I want to look at, and it's not the third. It is actually the first, and I'm going to read this firstly in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to read verse 28. Paul here in this chapter, he teaches the church in his day to come together, and he quotes I'll be reading directly from Matthew, but word for word, Paul is giving us the same teaching and the same understanding. But before we drink and before we eat, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 28, it says, But let a man, let a woman, each and every one of you today, if you're going to eat, if you're going to partake, you need to examine yourself. This is in 1 Corinthians, if you're reading with me. Chapter 11 and verse 21. This is where the communion verses start. But before we eat, verse 28 says, Let a man and women too, you're also included. Every person today, examine yourself. This begins. In the preaching we heard today, I trust there was some examining going on. Amen. Looking at your life saying, okay, I'm after eternal life. This is the direction. This is where I'm going. What must I do to be saved? Praise God. Jesus had the answer to that particular person. And today, coming to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, praise God, we're going to do some things in remembrance. Hallelujah. And that's what these ordinances are for. That's what this cup is for. And that's what these crackers are for. And he says, so let a person examine himself. So this is how we begin. Before we eat, before we drink, we begin to examine ourselves and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So you examine, you eat, and you drink. That's the three aspects of communion under my understanding and my teaching. And I confirm and back it up with what I read. Praise God. That's how or the reason why I do communion this way. Very important. Praise God. We see it in verse 28. Examine, eat, drink. Communion, the three parts the three aspects of communion. Verse 29, if you want to know why, say, well, why is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Verse 29, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. If you are not worthy to touch, don't touch. Amen. No judgment. Just get saved. Amen. Don't touch. Don't take that chance. Don't risk. Because look what happens. You eat and you drink unworthily, eating and drinking damnation to yourself. Not discerning the Lord's body. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I think the teaching we received today, we talked 
quite a bit. May not be complete, may not be everything. We'll never know everything that he did. That's scriptural to begin with. But we looked at a lot of what Jesus Christ did for you and I. Someone can say, you and me, hallelujah, what Jesus did. And he did well. He did good. Can someone say amen? Can someone say thank you, Jesus? As you continue to examine yourself, praise God. Lord, I pray the spirit of the living God upon each and every one of us right now in the name of Jesus. We don't look outward. We don't look to the left or to the right. But we turn and we look inward. We look upon. We look within ourselves. Praise God. May we see God's vision that he has for us. May we see, amen, the spirit of God leading us and guiding us. Amen. Not into sin, but into holiness, for it is God's will, even our sanctification. Thank God for this message today that will sanctify the hearer, praise God, and the doer to justify, praise God. Amen. As we put the word of God to work today, Lord, I thank you for this blessing that we have, praise God. Amen. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Verse 30, it's because they didn't examine they just went straight to the eating and to the drinking, and they forgot to take care of business. Praise God. So it's my responsibility today, once again, to examine yourself before you partake. Hallelujah. And for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So as you look inward, you judge yourself. Praise God. I'm not judging you. You judge the word of God. What The message you heard today, last week and the week before, so many times, amen, so many scriptures that we read from Galatians 5 and from 1 Corinthians, I forget, is it chapter 6 or 7, three weeks ago when we read how, amen, we read what, we, we, in fact, we looked more at what would, who would not enter the kingdom of God, amen, teaching us what you need, what you, what you have to put an end to, what you have to stop doing to get into the kingdom of God, either or. Amen. Praise God. It works both ways. And as we looked at that, begin to understand this and examine yourself. Have I stopped? Have I purged this out of my life? Have I stopped? Amen. From, am, I, am I continuing in well-doing? Or am I, do I still need God to sanctify me, God to purge me a little bit more, the Spirit of God just to tighten the reins, amen, upon my life, upon my, you know, the thoughts which, which I allow, which I entertain and such. Amen. This is examining. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So examine, eat, and we drink. Praise God. So prepare. If you need another few seconds, prepare. I'm going to wash my hands very quickly before I touch this. Amen. My, praise God. Um, this afternoon, if whoever is here, you can come forward or into the aisle. I'll have somebody serve you. But at home, praise God, let's come together. Praise God with the blessing that we have. I'm going to very quickly get into Matthew chapter 26, but let's get your bread ready. That's the second part. Amen. We've examined and we continue to examine. Let's get ready to eat in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. We're, we're on camera. So, yeah. No, it's all right. I mean, some people, not a, hardly anyone wants to be on camera. So in, in French, we weren't on camera. That's why everybody came forward. So if you, do, if you don't, if you want to be on camera, I'll give you the mic. Amen. Now, if you don't want to be on camera, just stay, stay in behind. Praise God. Amen. Because we're filming this for all our brothers and sisters. But come forward, brother. You, you, you went back too far. Come back. Praise God. Come back, come back, come back. Hallelujah. Amen. Just stay behind our cameraman. There you go. And you won't be. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Unless you don't mind being on Live on Facebook, you got people in Newfoundland, saints, and Alberta saints. Amen. They don't know you, brother, but amen. You don't know them. Hallelujah. And with all the restrictions, we probably, I don't know if we'll get to see each other before Jesus comes, but hallelujah. If not here, we'll see him there in the air. Praise God. So in Matthew chapter 26, as they were eating, and we're talking about Jesus Christ and the disciples, the, uh, and we can read this in 1 Corinthians 11, but uh, there's something very specific I want to look at here in Matthew 26. And it says that as they were eating, Jesus took the bread. So we have, I'll use, I'll use this because I like the way this breaks. If you have this kind of bread with leaven or this bread with no leaven, either or, I like using the unleavened, uh, an unleavened piece of bread because it, it breaks and it needs to break because Jesus blessed it and he broke it and he gave Someone say gave. 
Amen. He gave the disciples the bread in verse 26. In verse 27, he gave to them the cup to drink. Amen. He gave to them of this, of this earthly ordinance, of this earthly substance, before he gave his life. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. This piece of bread doesn't really mean much. It's an example. It's a, it's certainly, it's a display. Praise God. The, the cup, it's a display. But most importantly, he gave, the Bible says, his life. Hallelujah. This began with God giving. Praise God. The gift of God. And this is what I want you to know and be aware of. Praise God that Jesus Christ is the giver of life. Amen. As he, as he gave a piece of bread, amen, it, it gives strength. It gives life to the body. Praise God. And he gave the disciples something to drink, and it gives that substance. You know, it, it refreshes or, or fortifies the, the flesh. But then he went to the cross. Can someone say thank you, Jesus? Praise God. Amen. Some of you, amen, the, whoever's left, you can come. Amen. Join our brother up front if you want. Amen. It's a long way for me to go to serve you. Hallelujah. Look at home. Praise God. Amen. I don't know if you're sitting or standing, whatever position you feel comfortable. Amen. But I want you to have this understanding that as the example that we have, he took the bread and he blessed it. Praise God. Take that piece of bread. With, with, I don't, if you, make sure you don't have a crumb. That's one thing. Amen. You're saying, well, that's a big piece of bread. Well, Jesus, God didn't give us crumbs. Amen. Jesus didn't give us a piece of himself, amen. The Bible says that he went and he suffered every drop of blood, praise God. Split open his side, make sure there's no blood left. It was all shed. Some would say all of it, praise God. Not pieces. Broken in pieces, yes, but not some little piece, praise God. That's why I have in my hands today something that is as large as his piece really is. As they were eating, verse 26, Jesus took the bread. I'm going to bless the bread. Praise God. Hallelujah. Take your peace, put it up, and show God. Praise God. How many Father, Lord? Thank God. <coughs> For what's in this plate today, what I'm about to serve, bless. Praise God. Our bread, bless our water, the fruit of the vine, Lord. I thank God today. Not only does it nourish our flesh, the little bit that we will part, be a partaker of, but what we have received from your divine table, hallelujah, what we have received from your word, what we have received today from your mouth, words of spirit and of life, praise God, our souls has been fed, praise God. Now as we turn to this earthly substance in remembrance of what Jesus Christ did, we give you all the praise and the glory for the work which was accomplished on Calvary. In Jesus' name, praise God. Hallelujah. Bless this bread. In Jesus' name, amen. So the Bible says that he took it, he blessed it, then he broke it. And so it was broken. Praise God. Amen. He broke, he had to divide up between 12. There was 12 of the meeting. But I want you to look at what was, what needed to be destroyed because of your sin. What was broken. Praise God. That's what the image of this. Jesus didn't say, this is my body. He broke. He said, this is my body broken. My body is going to be broken. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. My body is going to be broken. So after he broke it, then he gave. Praise God. Someone say, gave. Amen. Parents, if you have children or if your husband, serve your wife. Wife, serve your husband. Do something. Praise God that I don't know who's at home, how many you are. If you're by yourself, well, thank God for the Spirit of God to be there. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, if you serve, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. At home, we're all going to eat together. So break your bread. It's been blessed. Hallelujah. As we have this fellowship, as we have this communion. And as I said, don't break off just a little crumb. Amen. God was good for Jesus was good for us. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There's nothing missing. Praise God. So if you need hallelujah, as long as it takes. It's going to take me five minutes to chew this piece of bread. Well, take five minutes. As often as you do it, as long as you do it, you do so. Amen. In remembrance. And you do show the death. Praise God. His death, which gave us life. Praise God. As God gave to the disciples to eat. Praise God. Amen. Let's get ready to eat. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So at home, 
again, if you have crackers or whatever, just make sure it's a big piece, a big chunk of bread. If that's what you're eating, make sure, praise God, that, it's, that you have, hallelujah, a piece. Praise God, you have some. Amen. My sister has already been sa- served. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's be thankful unto God. Praise God. Put it up in the air. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes, praise God. This is the body of Christ I'm talking of right now. And by his stripes, we are healed. Praise God. Eat, my brothers and sisters. Eat, praise God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in remembrance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not sure if the piano of my sister is making it all the way to your speakers, but she's playing the hymn that we sing every once in a while, that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Hallelujah. When you break that bread, hallelujah, break off a piece and put it in your mouth. Hallelujah. In remembrance. Hallelujah. Of who Jesus is and what he went through. Praise God. Hallelujah. Perfect priest. In Jesus' name, praise God. Perfect sacrifice. Someone say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now you know and understand why we don't serve crumbs. Praise God. So we can talk about Jesus. Praise God. We looked at the word continuance in well-doing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Eat, my brothers and sisters. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. If you weren't ready for communion, well, you can pause this. Go to the store, get some grape juice. Praise God. Pure juice. When it's pure, it's good. Amen. As I said, whatever bread or crackers you eat at home. Hallelujah. Bread is bread for this, for whatever we do in this remembrance. I just like the way the crackers, when there's no leaven, it breaks. Praise God. As his flesh was broken, bruised, mistreated. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Eat and be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As the prophet prophesied, wounded for my transgressions. Bruised for my iniquities. Hallelujah. Chastisement of my peace was upon him. Praise and the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And by his stripes, hallelujah, healed, praise God, hallelujah. Be healed now at home. We eat, praise God. Eat the blessing of God, amen, the promise of God. It's there. It's in your hands. It's in your mouth. And be healed in Jesus' name, praise God, hallelujah. You believe in his salvation, believe also in his healing. The same thing took place at the same time on Calvary. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. If you have one more piece to eat, someone say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 27, Matthew 26, and he took the cup. The cup that he was about to pray for. 
He said, if this cup can pass, are you glad? He says, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. He took this cup, and he gave thanks to them. As he gave it to them, and he says, drink ye all of it. I want to go, before I pray, before I bless it, I want to go into the explanation. I want you to have a clear understanding of what is in that cup. Jesus says, this is my blood of the New Testament. No cup, no blood. Amen. No cup, no grace. Hallelujah. Thank God for the cup today. Take the cup in your hands. Praise God. I'm going to serve the cup before I... Jesus prayed for one cup, but amen, I'm going to serve the cup. Hallelujah. So take the cup. Make sure everyone has it. Praise God in your family. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Take the cup at home. Do you have a cup? Husband, serve your wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone has a cup. Praise God. Wives, serve your husband. Take the cup. And let's bless this cup together. Praise God. Lord, I thank God. I thank God for this cup. We're all going to drink together. I'm going to pray first. Everyone, hang on. Amen. Thank God, amen, today for what's in our hands. Praise God. We've been drinking. We've been eating for the past couple hours, but now we have this ordinance off this table. But I thank God in remembrance, praise God, of this cup. He says, pass this cup by me. But he says, no, hang on for a sec. Not my will, but thy will be done. And Lord, we're thankful for your will. We're thankful that your son, Jesus Christ, came to do your will and not his will. Praise God. No cup, no blood. Amen. No cup, no deal. No cup, no grace. Praise God. I thank God today for everything. In the atonement which we have by his blood, blood which was shed, blood much more precious than silver and gold, blood much more precious than any animal, bullock, goat, to ram, lamb, sheep, whatever, turtle dove and duck, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank God. Hallelujah for what is in this cup today. Spiritually, we can discern the body of Christ. We may have grape juice that, which was squeezed out of grapes. As we look at the body of Christ that was destroyed, that was taken apart, that was mistreated. Grapes that were crushed, amen, beyond recognition. The body of Christ which was bruised, which was chastised, amen. In order to make this juice today, this is what happens, amen. The, mal the, dis amen, the malformation of, G of your son, Jesus Christ, beyond recognition, where his bones would be staring at him according to the prophecy of your book, Lord. But I thank God how Jesus came and what he became. Hallelujah today. Give you all the praise and the glory for what we are about to drink. And I thank God discerning the body of Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank God that we drink it in reverence and we drink it in remembrance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, drink. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, discern his body and remember what he has done for you and I today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus took and after he blessed it, he says, drink ye all of it. Someone say all of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't look at that substance. You need to drink it all in Jesus' name. Let's do that today. Praise God. He gave thanks as we just did, and then he gave it. To the disciples, praise God. Hallelujah. So drink in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank God for what he has given you and I today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for what we receive as far as our flesh is concerned. A little bit of bread. A little bit of juice. For the good of our flesh. But what we have received for the good of our souls today, our spirit, in Jesus' name, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for it, praise God. Be thankful for the blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thankful for the blood. 
Praise God. As I said, I'm not sure because of our technicality whether the piano is going in, so I won't attempt to sing a cappella. Amen. You can at home, though, thankful for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He washes me white as snow. Thankful for the blood. Hallelujah. Drink and be thankful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood shed on Calvary. Praise God. Hallelujah. Washes white as snow. Thank God for bringing us out from under the curse of sin in the name of Jesus. Thank God for washing away our sins. Thank God for the forgiveness which we have, for your blood which was shed, the atonement. Hallelujah. Remission that we have through Jesus Christ. And what was accomplished on Calvary, Lord, as we look at this cup, as we drink of this substance today, praise God, not worthy to be compared, but we discern the body of Christ and we know and appreciate and love, praise God, what Jesus did for us today. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Bruised. Amen. Just look. The little bit that's left in this cup. That's how it started. It starts like this. Looks good. Amen. And what it has to go through to become. What it has to go through to become juice. What it has to go through in order to be drank. Amen. In order to drink. Amen. What it has to go through. Amen. In order for Jesus Christ to have given us the life which he gave us on the cross. Drink, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say, as we bring this program to a close, amen. As I said, if you weren't prepared for communion, you can replay this. We're going to keep it online as long as we can keep it online. If you want to Play this program once a week and have communion once a week. Have communion once a day. As often as you do, you do show his death. Praise God. Amen. So I thank God for the examples which we have through Christ Jesus and through Paul, which has allowed us this fellowship, which has allowed us to come together and to have this communion, praise God, that we have. Lord, I thank God for this bread, the element, praise God, of the flesh. I thank God for this juice that's in this cup, the element of the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. Hallelujah. As we remain spiritual, as we discern the body of Christ for who he is, praise God, and for what he did for our salvation today in Jesus' name. I give you all the praise and all the glory, praise God, in Jesus' name I pray. Thank God for your, <clears throat> excuse me, thank God for your word which we received today. I thank God for this technology that we have. Praise God. I know it's not the same as serving one another and being with one another. Praise God. But it's as good as we have going for us right now. I look long for the day that we fellowship in person, whether to the east, to the west, to the south, or to the north. Praise God. Amen. But thank you so much for joining with me today. My name is Lincoln. I love you all in the Lord. You're listening to That's the Truth. And be blessed. Praise God. Be blessed with what God has given us and the scriptures that we have read to be honorable unto God, hallelujah, to be doing, to be a well-doer in well-doing, doing well, praise God, amen, as the workmanship that we are in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is what God wants. His will is your sanctification, and thank God for the preaching of the word. Praise God. It is possible through the Spirit of God, hallelujah. Be blessed. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, be blessed, praise God. Be thankful for the blood, hallelujah.